So we've done the sensory system already, the receptors and pathways. Now we're going to do the motor control. So I'm going to do overview, then there's some pathways to look at, and then we'll put it all together. So to start with, um, some of this anatomy you've already seen. Um, the motor cortex, this is where motion is um, initiated. No, it's not. Okay, we've done the sensory pathways. We're now going to talk about motor control. I want to start with an overview in the brain, kind of what's going on, and that will lead us into the pathways that control the motor neurons that actually initiate movement. So here's an overview. Um, some of these brain regions you've seen before. So movement is going to start in the premotor cortex. That's where we're going to, um, it's going to be initiated that's kind of in our, our frontal cortex, that's going to initiate the primary motor cortex. That's still conscious. This is conscious control of initiation of a movement. The primary motor cortex can um, has pathways down to lower motor neurons. Where are those? Those are going from the ventral horn of the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle, because we're talking about somatic somatic control here. Skeletal muscle. Um, could also be within in the head, it's not going to be spinal cord, but um, this most of the movement we're thinking about is via the spinal cord. Um, we've also got some other stuff here though. Right, so the cerebellum, it's, it plays an important role in movement. It's gonna receive information about balance and equilibrium. That's information from the body. So we could kind of sch draw a schematic of that. It's going to receive information, sensory information from a unipolar neuron. Um, maybe this is some sort of proprioceptor that is giving information about body position um, joint position, also balance, all kinds of different receptors. We've talked about muscle spindles, um, bulbous corpuscles that are giving the cerebellum sensory information. The cerebellum also receives um, information from other brain regions, and it's able to then kind of compare what's kind of supposed to be going on and what really is going on to adjust motor output. So it connects then to the primate motor cortex and the basal nuclei to adjust their activity. Basal nuclei, let's go there then. Um, it's also able to adjust patterns of movement. It does this by, you can see here, one, um, altering the primary motor cortex. which then is going to alter movement via those descending pathways. And the second one is going to go in this way to these brainstem nuclei. So altering brainstem nuclei that are involved in motor control. And we will talk about them specifically in a bit. So from those brainstem nuclei, there are descending pathways as well. So I should put little stars next to the descending or motor pathways that we're going to look at in the next videos. Um, basal nuclei and cerebellum both talk to each other, coordinating and fine tuning this movement. Okay, so the first pathway we're going to do is this one from the primary motor cortex down to the lower motor neurons. So this is going to be involved in conscious control of, of movements. So let's start with that. Corticospinal pathway, what this is called, it starts in the cortex, right? Which cortex? The primary motor cortex. And this pathway carries information to the spinal cord, specifically the ventral 
horn of spinal cord. That's why it's called the corticospinal pathway. These, um, I guess you had a neuron here, right? These neurons make up a tract. There's many here. So that pathway is a tract, many axons um, traveling from the brain down to the spinal cord. Um, remember, this is being initiated in different parts of the primary motor cortex that correspond to different body parts. So that, sent that motor homunculus, um, where certain regions can target certain region, certain segments of the spinal cord, um, different plexuses eventually that would target movement of different limbs. Okay. Let's look at this in, um, so, okay, one more thing here, sorry. This is the upper motor neuron. It's the one that's specific to this pathway. In the ventral horn of the spinal cord, there is a lower motor neuron that travels out to the skeletal muscles. muscles. All of the descending motor pathways are similar to this. This location where the upper motor neuron cell body is, is going to vary. So corticospinal is always starting in the cortex. Okay, let's look at the corticospinal in more detail. So here's what it looks like with kind of the, the detailed anatomy. Um, cells in the primary motor cortex are descending through the midbrain. I guess I could label label up here, it's the cortex, it says right there, and I'll label it up here, within the cerebrum, um, traveling through the medulla, and that's where they actually, these tracks, these axons of the these upper motor neurons, red is upper motor neuron, are crossing to the other side of the body. Um, so motor information, just like sensory, controls the opposite side of the body for sensory it's detected in the opposite side of the brain um, for the majority of our, our motor pathways, basically anything below the head. Um, so it's the left side of my body controlling the right hand. That's because of this crossing to the other side. This is also called contralateral. So the axons project contralateral, the other side. Um, now we've, we're still called the corticospinal tract and eventually this information, um, synapses at the ventral horn of the spinal cord. This could happen in any segment. So this is showing this happening further, further distal. Um, that lower motor neuron, right, shown in white, is going to the skeleton muscles, releasing acetylcholine on the skeleton muscles.